it's a sculpey. It actually comes in all different colors. So people, you've maybe done it before. You've seen people make sculptures where they're using different colored clays in, um, instead of painting it afterwards. They make sculpey like that. I like this white sculpey because you can just kind of play with it and you don't have to worry about mixing the stuff so you can use it longer. And so you, if you don't bake it, if you don't really love something you made, you can make something else out of it later and eventually you'll get something that you want to keep. Um, and again, so what we were talking about before, this wire is originally for, I think, electrical lines or telephone lines. Um, and it's made up of smaller wires that are braided together. They're pretty easy to cut, like you can use a scissor or knife. Um, don't use like your, if your parents have a pair of scissors that are special for cutting fabric, like fabric shears, don't cut it with those. I think that gets people really angry. You know, don't use the stuff that, that people care about being really sharp. Like I think you can cut through this with a little kid's pair of scissors, those small um, ones with the rounded blunt ends. But typically I don't worry about cutting it because you can always kind of bend it together. Um, like I said, this wire can be used to make things like jewelry or sculptures itself. And an armature is um, kind of like the skeleton of a sculpture. So a lot of times when you're making something that's a sculpture, if you just made it without making some sort of skeleton or armature to support it, it falls apart. Like you've maybe done that before where you're working with clay and when you're trying to put the head on, it knocks the arm off or things kind of get squished or fall apart. Um, so an armature helps hold things together. When people make really big sculptures, it's really, really important because when things get bigger, gravity will even break their sculptures if they don't have something holding it together. But for smaller sculptures, I feel like the armatures are good because it helps, like if you have something with arms and legs, it helps keep those on there. So I'm gonna make something that's sort of human shaped. And what I might do is just take a piece of the wire, or I'll hold it over the over here so you can kind of see it. Take the piece of the wire and almost fold it in half. See, it's like, I've got it so it's folded in half. It doesn't matter how long it is really. And then at the top, I, I'll twist to make like a circle. So you twist it around a little bit to make a circle. It's almost like a pole thing. And then you've got like this twisted part so the circle won't open up. And that can be what ends up being the head of a sculpture, a shape that's kind of like the body or the spine, like another circle. So if I hold it over the, the table, um, it's like there's a second, almost like a snowman, like the second snowball. And again, you can twist it together to make that area. And then from there, I might take one of these long lines. See, it's like a you got your head, you got your torso, and you got this long piece. I might take another one and figure out how long I want my legs to be, maybe just here, and bend it there. I could include something to be a foot even if I wanted to make it as long as like you have the foot in there too. And you just go back up. So if you saw what I did, it's like, you have, that's how long I want my leg. And then I just bent it to go back up. And I can wrap that around the waist again, right? And I could do the same thing to the other side. See, so the other side is like that as well wrap it around the waist again. And now you've got these two little legs. And if you want to, you could bend little feet. See, got little two little feet. Um, and then the, the rest of this wire can go up, back up to the shoulder or the neck, right? So see, it went back up to the neck. And the other one could go back up to the neck and twist around and come out the other side. And those could be your arms. And if you want to, the, with these, you just kind of bend them at the end where you, wherever you want the end to be. If the arm seems too long, you just fold it back a little bit, right? And so now I got a little person. You can like, I got to dance. <laughs> But since we've got clay, what I'm thinking we can do is whatever type of body you make, like this could be a person, but it could also be, if I change the way that it's positioned, 
It could also end up being some sort of animal, right? Walking on all fours. And you can change it if you want to make a really long neck for a giraffe, you can add more wire. Or, you know, you can change it as much as you want. And then on here, once you've worked with your clay and warmed it up, you can easily add clay to the different parts. See, so I can add clay to the middle. Here, I'll get out of the way so you can kind of see. Just You can even put big chunks on and squish it around. And now my guy's got a body. He's got really skinny legs and arms. And you could take another piece, right? And just wrap it and squish it around the legs. You don't have to be careful or like wrap, you don't have to wrap it like a, like a burrito or, you know, like it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like fancy or cause the clay just squishes around and squishes into it. So you can, you know, you can just take a big chunk of clay and push it on the front side. And when you turn it around to the back side, you can still see the wire, just kind of squish it on there. Um, and this is a way to build up a body that won't break as easy as if you did it without the wire inside of it. Now you have a really flexible sculpture. 275, so 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, it says for every quarter inch of the thick your sculpey is, you want it to be in there for 15 minutes. Um, so you don't have to get out a ruler, but so something like this pizza would, would only take 15, you'd probably put things in for 15 minutes. And then if it's really big, you know, like this deer guy might leave them in for 30 and just keep checking on it. After the first 15 minutes, keep peeking in. And I know that when they're baked, they don't get hard right away. They kind of, they are still really delicate when they come out of the oven and they have to cool down and they kind of harden all the way when they cool down. They go from being kind of squishy and malleable when you work with them to when they're in the oven, they get a little bit harder, but kind of spongy and they break easy instead of being malleable or like you can't make anything with them anymore. And then when they cool down, they get hard. So, but so 275, a minimum of 15 minutes and then check on it from there employ the help of parents. I know if you have something like a ceramic tile, um, you can put that in the oven and let it warm up and then set your sculpture on top of it. And that'll help like keep the heat more even. Um, and, and something like a, um, on a little plate in the, like a little um, oven safe plate in a toaster oven, is just fine too. Anybody that make that bakes one, if you don't have paint, set up a time and get some paint from the library.